Hi, I'm Jen Golay, and I'm here to introduce to you my Contact 645. Okay, this is the cream of the crop camera that everybody loves for weddings and for portraits. It's not cheap, but if you decide to invest in one, you will love the way it shoots. Um, the thing that most people love about this camera is the lens. Um, the body is a little finicky, but once you know how to use everything, I think you're gonna love it. The first thing you need to know how to do is put the battery in. On the grip side, you will see a little switch here at the bottom that you flip up and you turn, and then the grip slides off. The battery is a 2CR5. They are kind of obscure. They um, don't last very long in the contacts, so you'll want to either get rechargeable ones or invest in a lot, or you can get a battery grip. And this is what I prefer. Um, the battery grip takes regular double A's and it lasts about three times as long. So to insert the battery, you'll check the positive and negative. Positive is forward, negative is back. Positive, negative. Slide that in. Slide the battery grip on and lock it into place. To turn on your camera, you'll see the shutter button and there's a little dial around there. You've got on and auto exposure lock. Mostly you're just going to use on. Auto exposure lock is good if you are using your in-camera meter and you are shooting a high contrast scene and you want to expose for the shadows. So you meter for the shadows, put your auto exposure lock on, it locks the exposure in the camera, and then you can go ahead and shoot. Um, I mostly just use the on button. At the top of the camera, you'll see your shutter speed dial. And what makes this camera a little different from most cameras is once you hit the lowest shutter speed, usually, or the highest, usually you have to dial it back but this one just keeps turning. Um, that can be tricky if you bump your shutter speed and you think you're shooting at one four thousandth of a second and you end up shooting at one eighth, eighth of, or actually one eight seconds, not one eighth of a second, eight seconds. Um, at the base of your shutter speed, you'll see your shooting modes. You've got bulb, that's for um, when you wanna do a really long exposure, the shutter stays open for as long as you hold down the shutter. X, that is for flash photography and um, flash photography that uses an X contact. That sets the shutter speed at 1 90th of a second and it stays there. Manual mode, which is where I live. Uh, TV, which is shutter priority. And AV, which is aperture priority. You've also got at the top of the camera an exposure compensation dial, and at the base of that, you've got your bracketing. So if you wanna bracket um, by half stops or by full stops, you can switch, uh, flip that switch. Um, one of the unique things about the contacts is that it's got a back button focus. Um, you can also focus by pushing the shutter halfway down. Um, your shutter, or your focus modes are manual, uh, single, and continuous. You'll see those on the back of the, the dial there. Um, on the side, this is your uh, camera strap lug. I use a um, holster with my battery grip, so I have this on the side, and then a backup hook right here. Um, this button right here, or this hole right here that says B. That is for a screw-in cable release. Uh, if you have an electronic cable release, that little hole right there is for your electronic cable release. This button right here is what you need to push down in order to change your shooting modes. And there's a little lever right there so you can change your shooting modes. Uh, at the top of the camera, at the top of the back actually, you will see what type of film you're shooting, 120, and you'll see your film counter. On this side of the camera, you've got your shooting modes, continuous, single, 
and timer, and you can have a two second timer or a 10 second timer. Uh, this is your shutter speed dial, and to change it, you can't just turn it. Uh, so to change your shutter speed, you've got to push this little button down, and then you can, not shutter speed, ISO, sorry. To change your ISO, you uh, push that little button down and uh, change your ISO. If you want to do a double exposure, you've got a double exposure lever here. Um, for that, you push the inside button down and then flip the lever down. And when uh, you are done, you can do more than two exposures, of course. You can do 10 exposures. Um, but when you're ready to do your last exposure, you're going to flip that lever back up. The cont Oh, and one last feature at the top, you have your metering modes. You have spot metering, which is where I keep it, even though I don't use the camera meter, or center average meter. And that's about it for all the but. Oh, I keep forgetting one last. There is a when, uh, viewfinder shutter. And you might think this is a really weird feature, but what that's used for is when you are doing a bulb exposure or a long exposure, light can leak in through your viewfinder. So you want to block that. On all my other cameras, I just use some gaffer's tape. But on this camera, you've got that little switch right there. And you'll see the red dot in the middle of the viewfinder. Um, it's also good if you're using the timer and you don't want any light to get in through your viewfinder, flip your viewfinder shutter down. Okay, the Contax is a modular camera system. That means that all the parts come apart. Um, so what you've got on your uh, Contax camera is you have your lens and to take, I'm gonna turn the power off. To take the lens off, you're gonna push this button and twist and there's your lens. To put it back on, you're gonna line up the two red dots. I don't know if you can see those there. Oops. And twist it back. You can also take off your viewfinder and to do that uh, there's a little lever right here you push up and do it this way because I'm right-handed and you slide the viewfinder off. This is also where you'll find your focus screen so if you want to change your focus screen there are several different kinds that Contax itself puts out um, or did put out but uh, the one that everybody raves about and that I love as well is the Maxwell focus screen and this is where you put your Maxwell focus screen. It's really easy to take out but I don't have gloves on. I'm not going to take it out for you right now but you can see there are two little two little like handles right there and that's how you lift it out. To put your viewfinder back on just put it on the top and slide it into place. Your back also removes and to take it off, there's a little button right here that you push down and then twist. And this is tricky because I don't usually take my back off. So again, I'm right-handed. I'm gonna do it this way. Before you take your back off though, make sure your dark slide is in. The back will not come off if the dark slide is not in. And that's how you take your back off. There's your shutter, never touch that. You can see the dark side slide there. And then to put it back on, there's this little hinge. You just catch the loops right there on the hinge and snap it into place. Okay, that, did I forget any buttons? Oh, yes. This button on the right side, This the left side is to remove your lens. The right side button, that is your depth of field preview. I rarely use that because I almost always shoot wide open, so I don't really need to preview any depth of field. The contacts looks best when you shoot it wide open at F2. Um, sometimes I'll bump it up to F4 uh, if I'm shooting two people, but after about 5.6, the contacts lens doesn't it doesn't shine um, at any uh, smaller aperture. So the wider you shoot it, the better. Um, to load your film, you're gonna have to open your back. Now, there's a difference between the back and the film insert. Actually, I'm gonna show you, put that aside for a second. 
you can have multiple film inserts. That's one of the nice things about the modular system. And if you are shooting a portrait session or a wedding, you wanna have as many of these as possible. I've got at least 10 and you wanna preload them. And then you can put them in the little case and when you're ready to shoot or change film, all you have to do is pop that insert, the old insert out, put it in the case, pop the new insert in. To open the film back, which is not to take it off, but to open the film back, you'll see this little lever right here. You flip that up and turn the arrow. And then in the center, there are two little buttons to push and you'll pull those out. Okay. Make sure your take up reel is on the bottom. Now, when you load this, you wanna make sure that the black side of the paper is to the outside of the insert. These little levers pop out to make it really easy. Just have to line them up so they pop back in. Okay, so you wanna make sure the black is to the outside. And then you're going to put the little tab in your take up reel. And sometimes it's finicky. And then you're going to turn this silver wheel to wind it on. And you wanna hang on to it to keep it tight. You don't want your film to get loose. And you wanna make sure that it is snug against the film plate because I'm right here. This is, I'm trying to show you and I'm doing it backwards. Because you can end up with film flatness issues if you don't. Um, you can see on here, there's a little white mark. You're gonna wind your film with this little reel here until the start mark lines up with the white mark. And then this is how you preload your inserts. And then when you're ready to shoot, you're gonna put it in the back of your camera, pop it in, make sure you hear that click, and make sure both sides are clicked in, and you're gonna close your film back. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my battery grip back on because that's how I prefer to shoot, and I'm gonna go shoot this roll of film once I have it loaded. So you, um, to do that, you take the battery grip off, and then you just slide it into place. And then there's a little wheel at the bottom that you crank in. And that zooms it right into place. Take out your dark slide. There's a nice little pocket for it in the back. And you're ready to shoot. Before I go out and shoot this, um, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the battery grip and the bonuses that it offers. Um, first of all, it the power lasts longer, um, but to do that, make sure the little switch on the side here is switched to the AA batteries. Um, you can also put one of the regular contacts batteries in the battery grip um, and use it first, um, and there's a switch that you can push to that. Um, if you use that first, and you run out of power, make sure you switch it to the double A as well. Um, you'll notice that there is a shutter button on here, which if you shoot a lot of portraits, this makes it nice because you can hold the camera at a portrait orientation and um, you don't always have to have your arm up above your head. Um, my film is now loaded and if I push the uh, shutter button, it will advance. Here it advance, it's a good sound and your counter will say one, and you're ready to go shoot. I'm gonna go shoot this roll of film and be back and show you how to unload the film and move on from there. When you've finished your roll of film, your film counter will say E for empty, and you are ready to take your film out of the back of your camera. So you're gonna go ahead and open it up, pop that insert out, I close it back up right away to keep the dirt out. And you are going to lift that little lever and 
taken out. And as usual, with medium format film, fold your little flap in and adhere it. And you're ready to go get that developed. And now you can load your insert again. Um, if I'm not going to shoot right away, a lot of times I'll go ahead and put the take up reel in its correct space so it's just easy and ready to load. Open the back of the camera up again. And pop it in. Make sure you turn your camera off so that you don't use up those precious batteries. And that's how you shoot your contacts six, four, five.